What happens if reconsideration fails? Well, you've got two other avenues. You can submit an application under Section 53 uh, for a review of a decision of a public officer. Uh, that's Section 53 Immigration Ordinance. And that states that any person who's aggrieved by a decision act or omission of any public officer taken, done or made in the exercise of performance of any powers, functions or duties under the Immigration Ordinance may, by notice in writing, lodge with the Chief Secretary within 14 days of the refusal, object to that decision act or omission. Um, or you can apply for direct intervention by the chief executive. So let me just sort of talk you through both of those very quickly. Section 53 takes forever. Generally speaking, even though you may have a rock solid argument, the applicant loses interest over the course of the 12 to 18 months that it takes for that process to play its way through and not have any realistic sort of visibility on whether or not you're going to get approved. It, it used to have a role in Hong Kong when the Indian nationals that were coming to Hong Kong overstaying or rather than overstaying were able to get a, um, the case would be refused. They submit an application to Section 53. The Immigration Department would extend their visitor visa as well as Section 53 played its way out. And then about 15 years ago, that one stroke overnight, Immigration Department changed the policy, it said, no, we're not going to extend visitor visas as a result of a Section 53 application pending. And that put paid to that. And I guess the numbers under Section 53 must be minuscule. I certainly haven't done it. I think I've done two or three in my career. So there's not that much going on. And then uh, another way is, which is not recommended, but I've done once successfully and considered it once previously, but got an approval before it actually came to that, is to directly appeal to the chief executive if there's a significant matter of public interest in play. And I'll finish this presentation today by sharing with you this particular case study and how we were able to pull a rabbit out of that for the client. So it went like this. Around about the time of the Asian economic crisis, um, we had a client that was a, a bookstore, a big international bookstore. You probably know the name. Um, and they had a very interesting novel way of retailing books. And part of their business model was to actually ascribe um, to their management team sort of labels for work functions, such as bookseller. And this client came to us after their local HR had applied for an employment visa for an intercompany transfer professional staff and given them the job title of bookseller. And the immigration officer who was tasked with the case looked at bookseller, thought that that was not professional activity, didn't warrant the status for an employment visa in Hong Kong and denied it. But actually, the reason why he was a bookseller was because of the nature of the retailing that they did. And this particular retailer, what they did was that all the floor staff, firstly, they, 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 they positioned their books on the shelves in a certain way so that you could actually not just look at spines, you could see what the front of the book was all about. And the floor staff that were responsible for sections of the bookshop, they had to take home and read six books a month, I think it was, or eight books a month from their section so that they could talk knowledgeably to the customers that were, you know, perusing the shelves and could, you know, encourage the, the sale of a book by, by having, you know, particularly good knowledge about the tomes. Um, and so this particular applicant was the manager of this book this bookshop that was opening up they had three on the ground they were going to open up eight i believe and this one was due to open so they'd apply for the employment visa for the staff to come from overseas as an intercompany transfer he'd been labeled a bookseller that was enough for the examining officer to say no we don't get this no chance refusal so they came to, to us and said look what can we do i said oh this we can clear this up straightforward reconsideration so i read all the salient points came back refusal couldn't believe it. Did a re reconsideration, came back, refusal. In the meantime, the chief executive who's visiting Hong Kong comes to see me and says, This is ridiculous. He says, I've got this multi million dollar single you know, outlet opening up. I've got eight staff deployed. I've got thousands of books being delivered. And they don't have the manager to actually teach these new staff what it's all about, how it all works, all the rest of it. He said, he said, I can't expand into Hong Kong. 
on this basis. It's if I can't, if I can't you know, reasonably expect visas for my talent to come to Hong Kong to deliver on the business plan, I'm going to pull my investment. And this was at a time when I think he created like. 80 or 90 new jobs so far within his stable of of, um, of bookshops. And they had another three or four open and they were going to be creating about 120 local jobs. This was a time when Hong Kong was losing tens of thousands of retail jobs every week. Made no sense whatsoever for the immigration department to adopt this posture. So after the final appeal, the final reconsideration got knocked back. I said, look, the only way we can do anything concrete with this is to appeal to the chief executive. And it was uh, it was Tung Chiwa. So we did. And um, that afternoon, fact, what single page facts to the chief executive's office, asking him to look into the matter, citing the file reference number, stating the reason why it was integral, integrally important that he turn his attention to it. Later on that afternoon, we got a we got an acknowledgement from his office that they received it. The next morning, we got a call from the immigration officer who denied us asking for three or four bits of pieces of Mickey Mouse information. The next day, we got an approval letter subject to business review. So it's a six-month approval with, um, you know, re review conditions six months later, and we got them approved. So when all else fails, appeal directly to the chief executive, but as I say here, only if there is a matter of significant public interest at issue. And with that, I'm finished. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. Sorry that I ran a little bit over. I got a little bit excited towards the end. Um, if you want to ask me any questions, I'll stick around for whatever amount of time that I can answer the questions for you now. Uh, just to remind you that you can go to our website, hongkongvisageezer.com. Today's post contains all the actionable resources uh, that you'll be able to uh, use to turn the theoretical in today's presentation into uh, practical outcomes. And we'll definitely add all the flesh on the skeleton of the stuff that um, I've uh, necessarily been over the course of three hours uh, had to delimit to the stuff that we've covered today. So um, I think the final point is that I believe there's a multiple choice question and answer thing that you need to complete, which uh, I have crafted. Um, I look forward to seeing those from you. I don't believe that there's a pass or a fail on it. Uh, we just, apparently, the law society just needs to be satisfied that you learned enough during the course of your attendance to be able to, to answer those questions and um, look like you've taken some of this stuff in. So with that, uh, I shall uh, bid you farewell. And as I say, I'll be delighted to answer any questions if you want to stick around um, now that the formal part of uh, the event today is completed. So thank you very much indeed.